Welcome back at the first round table in 2022. As we continue the series of these international discussions after the conference, my co-host today is Kate. And on the 4th of December, millions of people around the world for the first time in the entire history of humankind witnessed an unprecedented large-scale event, an international online conference, global, global crisis, time for the truth. This conference united people from 180 countries in a 12-hour live broadcast that uncovered the most relevant and vital topics of our contemporary society. The truth was voiced openly and honestly to the entire humanity. People stopped being silenced. A time for the truth has come. Yes, indeed, Robert. Hello, dear friends, and we're happy to welcome you to this amazing discussion that we're going to have today. And the conference that was held on December 4th actually caused a huge resonance among people from all over the world. Um, so many scientific facts, um, eyewitness reports, so much, you know, tremendous amount of analytical data has been collected, analyzed, and presented to people in such a clear, honest, and comprehensive manner. So much feedback was received uh, by letters, by comments, by even some video feedbacks uh, from people from all over the world. And this actually showed us that we need to keep going. We need to continue. And that is why I'm really, you know, extremely honored to invite you all to the international online forum, Global Crisis, We Are People, We Want to Live, that will be held on the platform of the Creative Society Project on the 7th of May, 20. 22. And right now you see on the screen the page uh, of this event on the official website of the Creative Society Project, creativesociety.com. And today uh, we have amazing guests with us, one guest from Poland and another one guest way from Canada. So I'm happy to introduce you to Kamil uh, Murskowski from Poland, English high school teacher. Welcome, Kamil. And also Shirin Abdush from Canada, social worker. So dear friends, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the readiness and openness to share your thoughts about the conference and the topics that were, were raised during this conference. And we would like to start, uh, you know, from this little tradition, we would like to ask you to share your feedback, to share your thoughts and, and your ideas. What information was, you know, new to you uh, that was voiced during the conference and things like that. So could you please share your feedback? And let's start with Camille. Hello, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak of the really important th things that have been voiced during the conference, Global Crisis Time for the Truth. Um, the um, Actually, everything during the conference has been uh, really important. All the, all the things that have been voiced were important, but the thing that struck me the most is the cyclicity of the climatic disasters that are happening right now and will be happening in the foreseeable future because from an early age we've been always told that the climatic disasters are the result of um, the rise in co2 levels uh, the human activity on our planet and actually it turned out that it's not actually true and the true cause of these climatic disasters um, lies in the cyclical processes that are that are well beyond what we create on this planet here. So that was the most important bit that I was really shocked, and it made me really think about what is happening on our planet. So I think that's that's what interested me the most. Uh, if you let me to add some words about uh, my impression 
uh, about that international online conference global crisis time for the truth uh, it um, it's hard to imagine that that conference was organized by people themselves they um organized thanks to the independent unification of millions of people in our planet everyone who realized that now it's time when we need to unite and uh, uh, build a creative society just for save our life just for save life of our children and uh, the future generation and uh, to save our planet that's why uh, it's for me it was uh, unbelievable how people organize it and uh, that that conference was uh, translated simultaneously on uh, 100 languages if you imagine for one second how it's uh, unbelievable work will done by people themselves and also um, I was amazed how many videos was um, showed on that conference and uh, the team of uh, technical support it was amazing I can imagine how it was uh, possible to organize such a um, international conference where 180 countries participated so um, i was uh, so thankful for all of people who um, did that conference who participate and watch that conference as well because at that moment i felt myself that this is one big human family because i felt everyone who watch at that moment who uh, send their messages and um, send their questions and um, I thankful for all uh, speakers and for all participants who uh, told us the truth what's really going on 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 our planet thank you and you're absolutely right it, it really felt like we are one family and everybody was connected through the conference and they were doing tremendous job Amen. and all in their free time Absolutely. what about you kate mm -hmm. yeah for sure for sure it's even hard to believe how you can put so much information into one 12-hour conference and uh, it was so from one side shocking for me but from other side it was so inspiring because when you see such an amazing result you understand that once people are united everything is possible and right now i would like to suggest us watching a short video excerpt from the conference global crisis time for the truth and it it is actually on the topic of cyclicity the one that uh previously camille uh mentioned because the information there was really shocking for some people um but from other side it showed the real cause of the climate change that is actively happening right now on our planet and not only so um let's try to find out what is cyclicity how does it affect our solar system what does it have to do with us people and what challenges um, does it bring us in the near future will it bring us in the near future and what should we expect so let's uh, watch the video Igor Mihalovich, you said that we are entering the 24,000-year cycle, and the consequences of entering this phase are much more complicated than in the case if humanity would enter a 12,000-year cycle. They are certainly worse. In what way? What explains this? Well, we actually explained it more than once, but let's explain one more time. Let's try to explain in a simple and understandable way. Well, let's try to explain in an abstract way. Just imagine, let's say, a clock, a clock dial. This clock dial 
is our galaxy. Above it, there is the entire universe, a major part of it. Well, below there are already galaxies, well, they are towards the edge of the universe, so to say. And there is 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock on the dial. 12 o'clock is located towards the universe, whereas 6 o'clock is located towards the edge of the universe. What is a cycle? And here there should be an understanding. A cycle is when our galaxy, during its rotation, while it constantly rotates, so the cycle of its rotation is exactly 24,000 years. Thus, it is exposed to radiation twice, in other words, from outer space, from the universe, from galaxies. There is, let's say, such a ray of light, like a laser, just to make it clear, which simply shines. It shines not just on our galaxy, but on other galaxies as well. Aggregation and addition take place. And it's a very harsh interaction. It's not the light, it is something a little bit different. Energy. Right, it's a flow of energy that is formed by means of two lenses. Never mind, let's not delve into this. It's not an astrophysics class now. Yet, this hard radiation, when we get into a gravitational interaction, into a strongly pronounced interaction, with the universe, with masses of galaxies along one line, let's say. We get onto this line twice during the period of rotation, when we get to the point of 6 o'clock, it's a 12,000-year cycle. Then our entire galaxy is above us, and numerous planets take this hit. But when we get into this radiation, and at that time we are at 12 o'clock, it turns out that we are on the front line. After all, our planet is in the Sophora arm, well, in the arm of our galaxy. The planet is situated nearly at the edge of the arm. So it turns out that nothing protects us. And just like many other solar systems, we are actually a shield for our galaxy, for all planets and systems located below. Therefore, a much stronger impact takes place than when we are at the point of 6 o'clock, meaning when we rotate. Let's say, these interactions that take place, many people will come up with the question, how is that? It is clear that the galaxy rotates. Does it constantly occur or what? Well, the galaxy doesn't just rotate on its own, but there is also spiral movement of the galaxy itself in space, not only on its axis, but additionally, and so, getting into this cycle, when all this is combined, here we are exposed to this kind of process of interaction, so to say. Why is it not so dangerous at the other time? Because at other moments during 12,000 years, this impact occurs along a tangent line, meaning along a slanting line. There is no direct radiation. Here I can explain using the Sun as an example. This will be very clear and illustrative why in the middle of summer, when it is hot and the Sun is at its zenith, do our days become the hottest? Why? There is a straight ray. Or the Sun begins to set, or autumn comes, for instance, or it is winter. The Sun, let's say, is a side, and it turns out that the ray goes along the tangent line, there is no direct impact, for this reason. It is sort of warm, but not very warm. That's the kind of impact, or even better, you know, this is for a totally simplified understanding. Let's imagine a bullet that flies out of a gun is flying strictly horizontally, and there is a target that is located strictly vertically, so the bullet hits it precisely. And here, naturally, if the material is not quite solid, the speed is sufficient and the hardness of the bullet is sufficient, then it breaks through this material. But it's enough to only change the angle of our target for the bullet to deflect upon contact. In other words, the target is no longer placed strictly vertically, but at an angle. So when hitting the target, the bullet will be deflected. The same is here, at 12,000 years, there is a reflection of these rays, and it doesn't cause us major harm. But when there is a direct impact, that's when the trouble begins.
So, dear friends, uh, we just watched a, an excerpt from the conference. And uh, right now, we would like to ask you to share your opinion about this fact, the fact of cyclicity that is happening right now, and how, in your opinion, is it important and vital to talk about uh, the true causes of climate change right now among like people of different professions, different nationalities, all social statuses and stuff like that. Uh, you know, because speaking up and telling the truth, bringing awareness is, it's not scaring people. And the fact that it, it can actually help us to overcome the difficulties that are um, waiting for us in the near future and are already happening on our planet and other planets uh, of the solar system. So what do you think about it? Could you please share your opinion? First of all, I would like to appreciate uh, the technical um, who created that video because the first time in my life I really realized what is a cyclicity, um, how it's um, affect us, uh, how it's happening. And um, used everybody here and um, many, many times in um, our life that it's happened every time. For example, if you heard about the flood or uh, some tornadoes that uh, people told, oh, it was many years ago, but now I re realize that it's very serious what's happened in our planet, in our Earth. Uh, we are all connected with the um, universe, and uh, that uh, cycle of 12,000 years and 24,000 years is very serious, and we need to be prepared for that. For example, what's uh, happened uh, every uh, 12,000 years, we have now a lot of um, uh, materials and uh, articles which uh, everyone can find in the internet. And uh, we know that it happened in our planet. We have many, many artifacts and the scientists uh, prove that. But what about 24? thousand years we have some kind of, I, I told about myself I have some kind of understanding but now I realize that we don't have even any example what we uh, will face in the nearest future because nobody has that experience and we can imagine it will uh, be the first time in our human history so that video showed, uh, and uh, I'm very thankful uh, to Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. He explained very simply and uh, understandable for everyone who watched that video that we need to be prepared for that. We need to serious um, inform people who didn't know what is that. And uh, cyclicity is very serious. Uh, climate uh, uh, event which we will face very very soon because we we are living in the end of 12,000 years right it's very serious we need to be prepared for that yes you Shirin you're absolutely right and it's basically exactly how our mind works it's either oh it was way back behind a long time ago so we don't have to worry about that or it will happen sometime in the future, but we still have a plenty of time, which is basically mm -hmm. not, not as it is. And we have really a very little time. Us like human, but uh, we are living um, and thinking um, like, uh, like that. Oh, it's happened far away from me. If I look around me in the window, everything is beautiful, it's peaceful. And it's no, right? But I can't uh, really realize what really happened in our planet and how can we survive. If you, uh, for example, uh, 
uh, maybe a few days ago, I need to leave from one city to other city. It's uh, approximately one hour. And my husband told me, you need to be very careful and uh, leave as soon as possible this city because after a few, uh, maybe half an hour, it's going to be a very strong wind. It's 85 kilometer, uh, kilometer by hour. I, I told him, okay, okay, because uh, I didn't scare even. When I went and uh, happily uh, uh, get my place, after that, I realized why it was my reaction that everything is okay, I will get. But because I don't have any idea what is that. 85 kilometer by hour, the wind, how it's powerful. That's why it's very important when mass media inform people about everything which really happened in our planet. Even um, I spoke with um, witnesses uh, who, uh, it means I, I am not spoken, but I see the interview with witnesses who faced volcanoes. And uh, when I heard his words that, um, we saw how a volcano comes slowly to the, and uh, attack everything around them. They didn't realize at that moment that it's extremely dangerous and they need to leave that place as soon as possible. Now I realize that it's happened because people can't, uh, don't have that experience and don't have real, um, um, real don't realize a real situation because uh, nobody explains them, nobody mentioned about them. Because uh, if you see the um, uh, TV, everything is like perfect, everything is okay, but real situation is uh, not prepared like uh, in that conference. And um, so that conference showed us how it's so important and showed us all the truth which we have to know every person in our planet and we need to inform now. I knew about that and I would like to share with everyone in my way that what's going on in our planet and how we need to be prepared and that we have the way out from that. It's united and built creative society. This is my realization for that conference yes exactly and basically what conference showed is not only this what is cyclicity and how the cyclicity cyclicity works but also about the synchronization because many times even the mass media they showed you that something occurred a tornado happened i don't know throughout kentucky or somewhere else but all of, when when they don't show you that basically it's kind of works like a synchronization that now it happens there and immediately simultaneously on different other places around the world and that's what then when people realize that hey something is something is strange something is not happening as it should so yeah that is why the conference was important camille can you share your thoughts about that? Mm. Uh, yeah, surely I can share my thoughts about uh, what has been shown in the video and and what uh, what has been just uh, said. Uh, it, it really spoke to the uh, to the bottom of my to the core of my heart because we're really um, we're really coming. We're really coming closer and closer to that 24,000 uh, cycle, which is going to be more disastrous and uh, more severe than the one that happened 12,000 years ago. So um, only by disseminating the knowledge about the truth that has been voiced during the conference Global uh, Crisis Time for the Truth, we can survive what awaits us in the 
nearest future and we can um, share this knowledge by uh, through for example social media through talking to our nearest and dearest and secondly we have to unite as a humanity we have to combine our potential as a civilization to tackle and face the disasters that are going to affect all of us uh, those climatic disasters are going to uh, affect the people from all walks of life no one is going to be spared by climatic disasters as it has been said by many people before natural calamities do not choose their victims on the basis of nationality, religion, ethnicity, they are going to affect all of us. And that's why you have to unite to really um, survive, uh, so as not to be swept from the surface of this planet, basically. Mm -hmm. So true, so true. Thank you so much for sharing that. And indeed, as Shireen told us before, that whenever you don't have an experience of, uh, let's say, facing the uh, wind uh, of 85 kilometers per hour or, you know, any kind of other uh, situations, climatic situations that uh, you have never experienced, then you are not really ready and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to act. As well as you, um, Camille, said that uh, we, we cannot really realize how severe these disasters will be. And we already see right now... Um, in different places of our planet, how it all starts to happen and how people are being affected, how people have to truly survive. And, you know, the only thing that they can do is save their lives and uh, hopefully the lives of people who surround them. And uh, we, as other part of society, uh, as other part of family, actually, uh, we need to be ready to support each other and help each other. And only by uniting, uh, we have a possibility to do so because whenever we are divided, whenever we um, take a look at another person and see an enemy um, in this person, but not a friend, not a part of your global family, then uh, we're basically doomed. And this is extremely important, in my opinion, as well, to uh, bring this awareness of the true causes, the real causes of climate change, to not waste time on basically fighting with um, some... I don't know, fairy tales uh, about CO2, but to actually put all our scientific potential, all our human potential into one single goal of building the creative society. And uh, actually, um, as Shreen uh, previously mentioned about the fact that creative society is the only way out, uh, could you guys please share uh, why, in your opinion, it is the only way out? Why is it so important for us as people to build the creative society right now, not wait any longer, but already start implementing it um, on all levels? So maybe, Shireen, you would like to start sharing? You know, uh, that confidence, it was um, the first uh, so many shocking information I got during the 12 hours while that confidence um, informed us what's really happening in our planet. And uh, it was shocking, but at the same time, every speaker's inform and announce it. They give really truthful information about situation right now, but they told us that we have the way out from uh, this dangerous situation. In our consumerist format of society in which we are living now, it is not possible to change every, anything, but if we choose uh, all humanity, the creative society, it will be possible to survive and to save our planet. And um, it was so 
joyful for me and uh, I was so happy that we have a real chance right now to unite with all humanity, with all people. Because I realized that creative society, this is society about uh, which I dream all my life. Because in creative society, the main value is a human life. It means everybody is very important. Every people protect it. Every people have uh, uh, access to the very high health care, very high education, very high human life um, conditions, because we will have everything. And uh, I will not worry about the future of my children. I will not worry about um, to travel any place because I will know that there we live the same people who wants to live, to home, who wants to be happy. And that's why that conference very encouraged me and give me the power to feel that I can change that situation for better just to accept that um, main aim, creative society, because creative society is a society, is a normal society we are supposed to live human. We are not animals, we are human. That's why we are, uh, we are able to accelerate love, happiness, peace in our planet. And uh, at that case, I would like to mention about the scientists and speakers who mentioned about forest, how we destroyed our relic forest in our planet. At that, now we have only maybe less than 25% of uh, relic forest and they, they uh, need our protection. But to, uh, to save it, right now it is not possible but it will be possible if we choose creative society where all the effort of scientists who work in, uh, uh, in this field who um, did a lot of research and uh, find the solutions will uh, contact each other and very soon will decide that problem and we will save our forests our oceans our Mm, everything in our planet and also uh, like um, one of the speakers mentioned that uh, we destroy everything in our planet because we think about how to get money for example I'm living in Toronto and I very often uh, visit in other cities uh, across the, our uh, Toronto. And I, <clears throat> when I drive, I see beautiful, beautiful forest. But every time when I visit some place again, I see how uh, maybe one year ago in this place was forest, but now. People build the condos, buildings, and uh, it's happened every moment. And I think, oh my God, how to survive, how to save that forest? But we are not able to save our forest while we are um, living in a consumerist format. Because consumerist format, they need only money. They don't think about us and everyone, if you honestly, deeply um, see inside you, you will realize that it's happened. We need money to survive. But in a creative society, it will be absolutely different life when we will be able to save our planet, to save our oceans, to save our forest and to save human life because we will use the higher level of science and which will allow us not 
save our planet, but explore the other planets and maybe we will live over there. It's everything that's possible if we choose creative society. It depends for all of us. I decided that it's my best way which I can do for myself, for my family, for my loved one, for all humanity. If I do whatever I can do for um, inform people and explain them and um, give them information about that wonderful international online conference. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shirin. We know that both of you actually took active participation in the conference Global Crisis Time for the Truth, translating, doing translations. Uh, could you tell our viewers what actually inspired you and what, what it meant for you to, to take the active part in this conference? Camille? Uh, right. Um... I've actually have had the opportunity to contribute to the creating of this uh, conference uh, by translating some of the documents uh, into the Polish language. I was also proofreading those documents. Uh, what led me to take some actions to um, make my contribution for the preparation for the conference is um, um, I was basically looking for a way how I can contribute to disseminating that knowledge, to spreading the truth that would ultimately bring awareness to people to finally um, act and not uh, delay it for a, for a later time. Um, it's been really a pleasure to, to do what I've done and I hope that I've contributed to spreading this awareness uh, to some of my brothers and sisters in Poland who um, could not have, have access access to uh, to the English version of the conference. And um, yeah, I, I think that was my main motivation to help my brothers and sisters in Poland know about the truth voiced in the conference thank you so much camille thank you for your efforts and for your contribution to our common cause actually and shirin i know that you also participated in translations could you please share what was your motivation and what inspired you to um, actually provide the translation of the documents and some other materials uh, for, for the conference? And maybe uh, I will repeat the same which uh, Camille shared with us, which one uh, motivate him to do the translation work. The same happened with me. When I um, saw the videos about what's going on in our planet, when I read the articles, and every time I think it will be great if I give that um, chance to read exactly what's happening right now uh, in our planet to our people who live uh, in, uh, for example, my country, Canada, and uh, not able to read in Russian. That's why I start to translate articles and uh, I try to do whatever I can do because... Uh, it was so interesting um, and uh, I was um, happy that that information will get millions of people and uh, they will be informed. Just this is my motivation. Also, I really appreciate for that chance because uh, um, it is very interesting and um, I feel at that moment that I'm small piece of big, big <laughs> group of people who uh, do whatever possible for uh, informing uh, humanity. Uh, interesting thing, nobody asked me, nobody tell me, Shirin, you need to translate. 
this is just my um, my intention. My intention, yes. I want to inform. I want to do, and I do it in my free time. Uh, moreover, that enrich me, that make me closer to people, and uh, I feel that we are one family because we don't need to uh, divide bit between us. We don't need to uh, pretend that I am better or I am not like other people. We are all the same because now when the climate rapidly changes and we need to be prepared and uh, erase in ourselves that quality like love and gratitude. Without it, it's not will be possible to survive. Uh, I really understand that uh, situation. And uh, I grew up in the Middle Asia when uh, big, big family and uh, everyone is um, uh, accepted like, uh, like your close uh, family members. That's why if we we'll erase in ourselves love and gratitude and accept every people like uh, we want to ac uh, other people accept us we need to unite and we need to remember that we are human we uh, we we will able to do everything to survive if we will be like one family and accept everyone because climate um, he climate not possible to realize who we are nothing just human realize who you, they are and uh, it help us to survive thank you yes and exactly as it was mentioned many times here during the during the discussion that we need to unite uh what does it mean for you guys uh the unification of people that to overcome the upcoming challenges because many, many other, our guests and viewers will ask, what is it? How should we unite? What does it mean for you, the unification? Could you please tell us, either one of you, Camille? Um, for me, first of all, the unification of all people means to forget about our differences that have been dividing us for decades or for centuries and not to give in to all of the worst qualities that are some are hidden us like pride, egoism, megalomania, greed, and to cherish all of the best qualities in ourselves like kindness, mutual help, the urge to improve our lives and first of all the lives of other people. And so that's what it really means for me to unite to achieve this unity all over the world mm -hmm. Shireen and what do you think unification. what does unity mean to you unity it's mean uh, feel that I am the same people like the other one I want the same like uh, the other one wants um, why I uh, mention about that because how many people uh, with how many people I uh, speak about that? Every uh, told about we want to be happy, we want to be safe, we want to live in a peaceful world, and unification. This exactly way to get all that one, because um, unification. I am not under and I am not above. We are all the same. Everyone can uh, erase in their self that best quality and uh, don't allow to erase that ego which have everyone, right? We have a choice to be human or to follow by <laughs> bad sides in, in us. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, dear friends, for sharing your thoughts, your uh, feedback, and uh, your ideas today with us during this international dis discussion. And I'm pretty sure that our viewers uh, just loved it. And if so, guys, please feel free to leave your comments, leave your feedback in the comments, and also like our videos and share them on your social networks so that more people could actually uh, find out this information about the conference Global Crisis Time for the Truth and actually have an opportunity to watch it. As well as um, if you still have any questions left, mm, Maybe you have suggestions for the topics of the next international discussions. Uh, please feel free to also share them with us either in the comments or uh, send us an email to info at creativesociety.com and we will gladly answer the questions and um, you know try to implement the uh, ideas of yours of the topics in the next international discussions and also we know that right now we live in such times that uh, you cannot actually trust everything you see on the internet right you need to be sure you need to double check all the information you need to do your own research and um that is why if you still haven't watched uh, the conference, Global Crisis, Time for the Truth, Truth, we invite you to watch it. We invite you to visit the creativesociety.com website and um, under section international conferences, you will find um, the link to the uh, page uh, with all the information and the video of the conference because so much information has been collected by the international research team put together you can watch it you can do your own research and also share with us what do you think about it how vital it is for all of the humanity right now to find out this truth to speak up and to not be afraid of actually telling the truth Dear viewers, we would we are more than happy also to share with you the information that on the May 7th there will be another unprecedented event organized on the platform of the Creative Society Project International Online Forum Global Crisis We Are People We Want to Live. It will be broadcasted into thousands of media channels and internet platforms all over the world. As we already said, it all depends on us people and our actions. So please don't miss a chance to join this large scale international online forum and be the change yourself as Mahatma Gandhi said. To find out more information and everything about this event and watch the trailer, please visit creativesociety.com website and proceed to the international conferences sections. The participation of every person on the planet is now of utmost importance. Thank you for being with us today. And we're looking forward to your comments and topics and suggestions, as Kate already said, for the next international discussions. Thank you.